Hi there everyone, this is Leah from Steps to Change and welcome. Welcome to the Reclaim Me um, signature introductory webinar, whatever you want to call it. I think you're in for a treat and I know I'm biased because I actually did design this program but at the end of the day if we can't be proud of our own work then maybe we're not in the right place to be. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to step you through uh, this really magical program and again I'm biased but you know that's life um, and what is subjective is is to help you transform your life from overwhelm into owning your own life so just bear with me we're just going to flick through these slides and I'm going to step through and describe it to you and just the question is that I ask is this appropriate for you where do you sit at the moment in your life where are you actually now and where would you like to be in the say the next six months, a year, two years, five years from now? So in the back of your mind as I go through this, I just want you to keep thinking about this because this is really a key part of any form of change. You've come into this point through questioning, okay? No one stumbles into this sort of information. It is because you have an inner drive or inner desire to make a change for whatever reason and there's absolutely no judgment on any of that so let's get started huh transforming your life from overwhelm into owning it now you might be wondering who am i and what have i got as qualifications to talk about something so personal and so important well i can assure you my journey has been quite an interesting journey to date I might look young, but I'm actually on the closer end of 50, okay? So keep that in mind too, that, hey, I look pretty good. My qualification is 20-something years ago, I was challenged by my then husband. I was in total overwhelm. I was studying at uni. I did marry young. I married at the age of 18, low self-esteem. Put my hand up for that. And it got to the point where nothing was working anymore. I felt my life was literally falling apart. And he so lovingly took me to a seminar on um, happiness and he said, you need to fix yourself. And at the end of the day, I, I really must thank him because that was a turning point in my life. And maybe that's similar for you. Maybe you've got to that point going, I am so stuck and so overwhelmed and just so whatever that I feel like I'm drowning. And yeah, you're here. So this was me, I was literally drowning quite severely. I felt like topping myself quite a few times and so life goes on. I then started to look, thankfully, as I said to my then husband, um, I started to question, I started to look, you know, Tony Robbins, um, Deepak Chopra, um, Wayne Dwyer, uh, Marianne Williamson. There was quite a few, uh, and Louise Hay, of course, we can't forget her, in that era of, you know, all these years ago. Start to look, I knew there was something that had to be different. I was so unhappy, so stuck and just so pained that I knew there must be a different life because I was looking around at other people's friendships, relationships, what they're achieving in their work and their families. And I said, this is not working. You know, I want what they've got. And if they can have it, then so can I. Because, you know, at the end of the day, we're really no different. Yes, I had a lot of baggage, but I also knew if... If other people have this, then it is quite possible. I just need to find a way to do it. So that did start me on the path of looking, lots, lots of reading, seminars, um, learning retreats and things like that. And with this, I did finish my qualification as a dietitian and I still am. So that means that I am medically trained in nutrition within the current medical model and the government. So. After that, though, um, I did study NLP, which is looking at the subconscious effects on the conscious actions, you know, our thoughts, subconscious thoughts and actions and beliefs and what we create in our own world. From there, um, I also did recently finish the RTT program, which is a very profound, very, very articulate a very detailed um, form of hypnotherapy where we really do get into the inner workings of um, our DNA. We do have the ability using specific coding words, I suppose, or phrases to start 
telling from a space of love our cells to do what they need to do, talking with the DNA, reprogramming through the subconscious and the subconscious talking with the body to rearrange and get us act together, basically. Um, very, very powerful. So with this new modality um, toolkit that I've got, we can start using phrasing to help the body to heal from symptoms and diseases. And not only that, we can also look at relationships, you know, law of attraction type philosophy and working within our own DNA, within our deep, hidden, trapped emotions, start to heal them, transform them. We do start to create a life that is really what you want it to be. Okay. Very, very powerful, very, very effective. So with that, um, I have also written a few books. These are just two that I'm going to talk about because these are the two that are actually built into this Reclaim Me program. So this one, as I'm showing here, um, it is currently on the international book circuit, which is uh, it's really quite exciting for myself and I don't want to talk about me all the time because it's really about you. But it is the philosophy for which I work from. It is the philosophy base of um, the program. And its companion journal is what you will receive on a weekly. It's, it's cut up into the 12 week divisions. And this particular journal is what you get as part of the program. And again, it's really facing your own theory, your own beliefs and getting you to, to check it through. So my wish for you is that the 20 plus years I spent in trying to figure myself out and get rid of some really, really deep, painful experiences, memories, um, genetic transfers, because we do know the research is currently showing that we can pick up um, genetic uh, risks, some um, genetic um, memories, that's a better word, genetic memories from our parents and grandparents and also down the generational lines. There is research on that. So my wish for you is that you don't use as much time as what I did. You know, this is 20 plus years that I've been working on me to get to the point where I was such a wallflower. I had absolutely no self-esteem, no confidence. I was an A plus um, personality, high achiever, had to do everything right. And it caused so much friction in my marriage. And I know that I was a big contributor to it falling apart. Um, you know, it does take two to tango, but I certainly did not make my husband's life comfortable around this sort of thing. I was very much a control freak. Um, and so his personality and my personality just really didn't match. And I do honestly believe, and this is, you know, Scout's honor, that if I had these tools earlier, if I had these tools even, you know, 15 years ago, the marriage would have been still questionable if it was sustainable at that point. However, the aftermath of the divorce and then the child's custody and the, the quagma that was created through that process, I honestly think that process would have been so much simpler and the, the children's lives wouldn't have been as traumatic and then for them to now pick up um, the issues and work through the, the issues that basically we created for them. And as painful as it is still for me to admit that, I don't want that for you as well. I don't want you as the individual to either the, the mother or the father to have to go through that pain. And I do honestly believe if we can support people through before the separation, get the marriage or the partnerships working smoother, even if you still choose to separate and potentially divorce, the pain and the big trauma parts that are play out during that knee jerk reaction time because it's so stressful. It's, it's not as difficult. You know, you will have tools to cope in the moment. You'll have tools to actually do what needs to be done from a space of more loving, more compassion, more empathy for yourself and also the partner and more so for the children, okay? So in many ways, my wish for you is to, to just heal before big things fall apart, okay? So just have a think through are you in a similar position to what I was 20 plus years ago does this feel like you you know you're stuck you're in that exhausted mode you're in the fetal position where you're going it's just so difficult I don't know what to do or are you in fact literally feel like you're falling apart you're splintering you're shattering your energy is low it, it's you're just overwhelmed and the pressures of life between your family situation um, you know your work 
maybe finances, other people's expectations, cultural beliefs, um, all these different things that particularly for women and more so for men, it is starting to shift. The pressures of life in our current society are overwhelming. And I do see it often with my clients, you know, they just feel shattered. They feel that the guilt trip is just they can't do what they want to do, you know, within their relationship, within their family unit, because they just, they're just falling apart. They're just crumbling. And I do see them often when they get to this point where they're just so frustrated, overwhelmed, they're lost, they're exhausted. They, they just want something different, but they don't necessarily know what is different or what could be different. You know, they're exhausted and they're, they're crying out for help. Okay. So this is something to, to think through. And I am a big believer in, and this is from my own experience and also through many different things over my life and, you know, the studies that I've done, is that at the end of the day, all our thoughts and actions and choices stem from our beliefs. And there's, again, a lot, a lot of research around this. Really big, well-named um, authors such as Deepa Chopra, um, Candace Pert, uh, Marianne Williamson, again, uh, Lipton, Dr. Limpton. There's also um, Joe Vitale. Um, there's just so many big names. There's one that really does, should be mentioned, but I can't remember in this instant. Uh, and that's life, isn't it? But at the end of the day, the key messages that they're saying is that from our beliefs, I'm just going to put the pointer on. Okay. Laser point. Here we go. From our beliefs, we create our lives. So, when we're feeling so destitute, when we're feeling so alone, isolated, crumbling, what sort of beliefs are actually playing out? And this is a big part of the program. We need to understand our historic beliefs, you know, where it actually has come from. Is it something from our childhood? Has it been more so from our parents installing it into us, our teachers, our peers, our society installing these beliefs and then because we're young and naive and yet have to um, work out through our filters, have we taken them on? Is it from the DNA? Has your genetic heritage actually started to implant and play out now? And I see that a lot. And it's really fascinating, but it can be really quite scary in some ways because we have these actions playing out that are so irrelevant now. One of the common ones is, you know, I need to eat everything because I'm going to starve. Now, this has often come from the belief that those in the wars, you know, those the grandparents or even earlier, those who lived through wars and famines and pure poverty didn't necessarily have a lot of food and the belief has been ingrained into the DNA and now we still have people who are eating with the fear that they will be in poverty or they won't have enough money or there will not be enough food. And with that, the anchoring and then the diet messages. And so as soon as we start to physically diet as in restrict our food choices, our metabolic systems go bang, no way am I going to die from starvation. And it reserves as much energy from the food as we can to protect the body because the body just wants to protect itself. The subconscious is all about preservation of the being. So that's just one example. Another one is the fear of abandonment. Now, this can come in at many different stages, and again, um, through history. It can also come from the very early phases, like the abandonment. You know, if you look at the practices of, you know, new, new parents, you know, the birthing uh, was very much a male domain. Then the children often were whisked away to the nursery, and that bonding process wasn't necessarily strong. Or there wasn't a lot of search, no understanding about postnatal depression and how many bonds were not established in that really early critical day one day two early up to two years of age because the mother wasn't coping the father didn't understand or didn't know either the skills in you know, the society was starting to crumble at that point you know the extended family unit of care was certainly not present in many of the western uh, european you know the cultural changes that were happening up during the wars and things like that. So society did play out a lot of these changes. And then our current beliefs, you know, the ones you're living in, can be still playing out in the now. So with that, I just want you to question some of your beliefs. You know, 
around your worthiness maybe or your accessibility your the maybe the disjoint between the male and the female roles money income all that that really deep issue things you know the roles of the mother and children is there a tension around that how about the white coat syndrome where you know the doctor is meant to be almost a god and whatever the doctor says or the medical system says must be true how about the media? How many messages are you taking on from the media around your own self-esteem? You know, are you worthy enough because you don't have um, the right car or the right holiday overseas? And so these things can really play out. And with the beliefs, we do have thoughts and then our thoughts interchange with our beliefs and create feelings. And that anchored in from memories too. So this music that we heard um, at the time when we started to believe these things can take us back. Another common one is, you know, our first boyfriend or first significant relationship or series of relationships. What sort of the messages did we take on during those times? You know, the experiences, the friends we had, all these things do play out in the now. So with that, the thoughts make the actions you know if we want to eat well then we will choose healthy food simple from that regard but how many guilt feelings can come up and play when we want to actually enjoy and indulge on a night out or we want to have that piece of chocolate cake or even a bit of a treat so our thoughts are very much dominated by our beliefs that create actions and then triggered emotions and then our interrelationship between our colleagues, particularly our family, because a close family unit is often where we play out our big emotions and our big um, histories. So with this, the question for you is, how many things are you consciously aware of that you're choosing or not choosing? How many unconscious things are you actually doing? And if you're thinking maybe there's a lot of unconscious things that are just knee joking you around, you know, just going through the motions, autopilot things. Someone says something or you hear something or you touch something or, and you, you just maybe fly off or there's a trigger or a button pushing, as we will also call it. If that's playing out, are you ready to look at taking charge back and owning your choices? If that's the case, then you definitely are in the right place because the program that I put together, um, and this is over, again, years of um, personal therapy, but also studying to the therapeutic level. And with a bit of help watching my clients over the last particularly two years and the really deep calling to help others to get their life back because I know what it feels like to be in the overwhelm, that really stuck, painful position. And so this is how the program was developed. I have been in the red zone, okay? I was there for, oh, oh dear, about 20, 30 years. Um, I grew up in the red zone, okay? My childhood was in the red zone. So I know exactly what it feels like for me and I have empathy for, for others who maybe have come from or are still in the red zone. However, if you're in the red zone, I strongly recommend maybe just doing one or two, the shorter version to get you kickstart and starting to heal some of that big rubble things so that you can actually dive in deeper in a more ready state because it takes there's a lot of stuff that comes up if you're in the red zone okay and it takes time and it takes support and I don't want to rush through any any healing program that might you know cause unnecessary um, discontention at this point so the people I like to work with in this particular type of program, you know, where it's intense, it's actually going on for quite a few number of weeks, is the the yellow to the red, this orangey, greeny. Oh, yes, so I said that wrong, didn't I? Sorry, take that back. Okay, so the part that I like to work with, people who are in the orange, the green, these two middle sections here, because it is so intense, in a positive way, but we do touch on quite a few important things. And I don't want people, because it's an online program too, also to feel um, unsettled and not being able to get the support as they need to. So like I said, if you're in the red, 
then it's much better to work one-on-one, -on -one, okay, in a more private area, maybe follow the, the group and things like that. But if you're ready, if you are looking and you want to understand more, you've done seminars, you may have even followed a few other people, um, you've read the books, you, you, you're you ready to just dive in. This is the perfect for you. Also, if you're ready, you're already starting to unblock a few things. Maybe you've done quite a bit of personal work, but you just need a bit of a, a cleanup, like a big boulder cleanup. And you just really to, to make big difference because the style of techniques that we use, okay? Maybe you're in the nail up program. Maybe you've got the life that you want. Maybe it's also about um, stepping back again and, and doing some of the big work, um, but also in a much more gentle way because you have a lot more insight, a lot more self-awareness. And so, you know, there are the four phases. There's also a lot of, obviously a lot of in-betweens in between there, but this is the ideal. For those who are ready, they're looking around, you notice that there's something different. You want to be different because you want to make a change for yourself. You want to make a change for your family, have better relationships. You want to have a better uh, work balance maybe. And certainly you just want to have control back, but in a positive, nurturing, loving way. Then this is for you. So what does it actually look like? Now, the next couple of slides are... Um, I'll go through them reasonably quickly because there's a lot of information in here and it may not mean a lot to you. So basically it is 12 weeks. Uh, we start down here where you are. Um, we do have uh, several, we actually have six individual consultations like you and me over the course of the program. We also have the support group. So we look at the mind-body relationships. We look at what you can do on a daily basis. We look at your, where you currently are as you see that you are, where you want to be. The digestive system is an analogy between um, figuratively and ultra literally, you know, the body, how it's actually digesting, but also how is the mind digesting information and information coming in, but also what's being spat back out, you know, your beliefs, your ideals and things like that. The power of beliefs, we really deep dive into the beliefs that you carry and we work to transform them. So the, the lighter, the nicer, the more um, empowering, loving ones. The place of story, we all live from stories. We make up our own story. Um, what I told you at the beginning is in fact a story. Someone looking into my life would go, that's not what actually happened. And my ex-husband would not say that is what, that's so not what happened. So we do come from our own place of story, but we also have the power when we work through these to make different shifts. We can make more loving space for ourselves and then we, we get to rewrite um, all the things that we want to and then we start to live life. We get to own it because we know the skills, we've got the tools, we can actually make a difference. Okay, so like I said, the mind blocks, a daily guide, know what we could do on a regular basis, if not daily, wheel of life, where are you, where you want to be, Mind-body relationship, this is really, really powerful, okay? Everything starts with a thought, which stems from our belief system. Our mind talks to our body, our body talks to our mind. It's a two-way street. Our gastric system, our digestive system, talks to the mind through chemical imbalances. It talks to the immune system and also to the nervous system. So there's a huge, and I mean massive, um, intercommunication system that happens in the body. Beauty is, though, once we start to shift one of them, it's like the domino effect where other parts fall into place. So we get to work with that. We get to play with that. Now, again, it's not a quick fix. There is a process to this. There is a time frame. There's a bit of a lag. And it has to be that way, okay? The body does take time to heal and to adjust. So we do look at that very pointedly. I use my nutrition background, also my more specific um, tailored training that I've got in nutrition and in mind body works and we get to the deep stuff Now the daily guide um, as I said earlier you'll get a weekly email and these are things that we touch on every day okay you get a, um, a daily record of foods as an accountability we look at your questions you know what actually happened today what felt today what triggered you today who do you need to forgive when did this happen before so you get to get a really, really deep awareness. And without awareness, nothing will change. Awareness is the first step to change. So we ask you to become very aware of what's going on in your head, in your body, okay? There's a weekly planner so you get to look at self-care, so you get to, to um, diarise 
I'm going to look after me in this way on this day because you need a lot of gentleness around this process too, okay? So you need self-care. It is very, very important. Um, the next one, the wheel of life, I said, you need to know where you are. And these are the macro um, pillars. You know, where is your physical environment, the place you live, the places that you work, and your money and your finances, your health, your family, your relationships, how do they fit? Are you really good over here but poorly over here or vice versa? Maybe you're great in your, in your family and your health and your romance, which is great, fantastic. But do you sometimes struggle with your finances just to keep paying the bills and maybe you feel like you're, you're dragging behind in your career and your workplace? It doesn't matter at this point because this, again, is an awareness process and without this, you know, you know, you need to know where you're going to head towards. So we look at that in quite a bit of detail. So, like I said earlier, the digestive system, your association and um, pulling apart, bringing in and eternalising the power of beliefs. So this is another week that we do one-on-one -on -one and we look at your beliefs and do some transformation, really, really deep transformational belief work. And we start working out your story that you want to be making. Okay. Now, the digestive system from the purely the physical body is um, paramount because there's so many conditions that start in the, the gut, the gut. So IBS, uh, food intolerances, um, bloating, weight, mind, body, so depression, anxiety, emotional changes can happen from the food that we eat, but also from what happens in the small intestine and the large bowel. The chemical associations that happen during this process can trigger emotions and vice versa. Our emotions can trigger the effectiveness of digestion. So again, it's a two-way street. So once we start to look at the gastric function, we may need to put supplements in. Okay, they are extra. But if we can balance the gastric and support the body from a nutritional point of view, magic really starts to happen. The body must be supported to be able to really do the mind work too. Okay, and I see it often. If you just do one without the other, it still works. However, there might be a leg up. So we, by combining the two together, by helping the body plus the mind and the coordination of this, it just makes it smoother. Okay, and that's what you want. You know, we don't want the 20-year lag time like I had. We want it to happen at the right time, but also easier, simpler, less symptoms, less triggering of the body because who wants pain at the end of the day, honestly? Who wants to feel pain? Who wants to feel so fatigued that you can't think while you're doing this work? Or you're so overwhelmed by the amount of emotions that come up and your body goes, fuck it, I can't do this, okay? And yes, I did use that word. Okay, so the power of beliefs. This is where we start to make the magic. We got, start to make change at the deep cellular subconscious level. And I hope you're starting to get the idea that when we start to work at the deep level, everything else sort of falls into place because it's from that place that we're creating our own reality as it is. It parts of the, of the filter, the way we see and perceive and interact with the world. So if we start at this point, along with everything else, then magic starts to happen. Change the beliefs into saying, I am enough. I am loved. I am supported. I am nurtured. I can do this. I can make change. My children love me because I love them. And we work from the heart space. And when we work from the heart space, things get better. Okay, so the story of your life. Okay, you've been running a story forever up until now. And without making a new story, without you know, literally restacking what you're standing on and making sense of it, getting rid of the ones that don't serve you anymore, closing off the ones that are lessons and keeping those for lesson work but not for the story work and then putting to peace these, these ideas that are spinning around that are, again, potentially harmful because they might hit on the head or they might hit someone else on the head. We get to rewrite this. We get to restack the story in a much loving way. We get to say thank you to the lessons. We get to say thank you to the past that have caused the hurt, but also built you up and gave you what you are now. So again, lots of forgiveness work happens at this process, and through the whole program, but at this particular point, there's lots and lots of forgiveness. Forgiveness to you first, because now they become more aware, 
the guilt that can come up are quite significant. So you have always, and I mean always, done what you've done because you thought maybe there wasn't any other way. So you use the knowledge, the skills and abilities and the confidence that you had at the time to make decisions. You have done everything perfectly right. Others may not think that, and that's okay. That's their side of the issue. But you, in your own choices, you made them for a reason. And if you haven't learned the lesson, you could have had to do them again. So it's all about accepting and understanding that, yes, you may have created pain, you may have created challenging situations, but they've been for a reason. The bigger world order of the universe supporting you or God supporting you, whatever the label you want to use for that, Everything has happened in its own right time, in its own right way, because it's brought you and created who you are now. And if you're not sure or you don't particularly like what you are now, you now have the chance to make something different, making it what you want it to be. You have the power of choice and you get to create it from a place of self-love and self-care because you get to remove those limiting beliefs and putting positive ones. Okay. So then you really start to make the shifts. You start to make the shifts. You start creating that space from a very loving, motivated, adventure, enjoyable space. You're more content. Okay, you start to live life because it's okay. The things of the past have been okay. Not pleasant. You're letting go of the anchors around that. And you start to really see the rewards and the recognition. Your relationships change. Your, your work and your career improves no end. You, you just feel good. You look good, okay? Now, seriously, this face is 50, almost on the edge of 50. And I know I look good. I know I look so much younger. And that's not from an ego point of view. I'm saying it because once you do the inner work, the outer world does change. And, yes, you might be able to go backwards, and I've seen that. I've seen some women become younger looking because they're acting, they're feeling, they're eating better, they're feeling better, and so their face and their body is showing it. So it's not always a real external um, deliverance of your changes. It's not always about the car, the house, the holidays. That They're great, but... You know, how about if it is that you love yourself and you're more content, you feel good in your own skin, you think you can do almost anything and you can, you can, you know, go for your goals because you know you can do them. That is what we're about, okay? So your vision and your dream, what is it that you want for the next 5, 10 years? Where are you really heading? You get very clear on that. You start to celebrate because you're starting to really see who and what you are. And at the end of the day, that's where it is. You know, you live in your own head, you, you live in your body. The external, what you can feel and touch, you know, what you can experience with others is actually still felt in you. Your joy and your happiness is still in you. So it's a really, I suppose what I'm trying to say here is that you need to do the internal work to be able to have the external sense experiences you know you can touch a person you can go on the roller coaster you can hop on the plane you can see different adventures but you still feel it in yourself so what would it be if you were to literally clean the lens of your perception you know how you actually see things how you feel things if that was really crystal clear then the world is your oyster because you can not only i'm not going to say that but you see more of the good you see and you feel more of the love side of life and what it is so your life literally changes from the inside out now i'm just going to do a very quick exercise because we're uh, running on time here for the next three you can see three photo frames and i want you to just take some really deep deep breaths and just see and feel what your life could be in the next six months just close your eyes deep breaths yeah out and I want you to think through what would you like your life to be in six months time and just in your mind's eye what does it feel like what do you see where are you who's there what can you feel on your skin maybe there's a bit of a breeze or maybe there's a touch if you're eating food what are you actually tasting 
How old do you think you feel at this point? And what activities are you doing? So just put that scene in the back of your mind on a video screen, just hold it there for a second and go to the next photo frame. And again, do a similar, go for two years this time. And just imagine, see what you see in two years time, how you feel, what are you doing? Who else is there? Are you hearing, smelling, maybe even tasting? actions are you doing? How playful are you? How happy are you? And just make the happiness, the lightness, the content part, make it even bigger. And you might get a, a word of wisdom, you might hear a phrase or message at this point. If that's true, just anchor that in, you can come back to it and put that scene in the back of your brain. It's on their video screen, it's not going anywhere. And then the third photo frame again. Make it five years, whatever you feel comfortable into the future. Who and what are you going to be in five years? Where are you? How do you feel? Who are you with? What sounds do you hear? What smells are you smelling? And really get a sense of what it feels like to be you five years in the future. And again, is there a word of wisdom? Is there a message from the future you? And if it is, just put it into your being, just put it into your heart. And then put that photo frame with all those memories, and all those ideas into the back of your brain, knowing that you can come and revisit them anytime that you want. And after this session, I suggest you actually write it down. Okay. So while you're still very relaxed, just really feel into those three scenes. The one from six months, the one from two years, the one from five years, whatever it was for you. And just feel what it felt like. Maybe a sense of hope. Maybe a sense of freedom. Maybe excitement. Maybe a sense of, wow, possibility. You really feel what that is. And again, just really anchor that. Just breathe it into all parts of your body. Own it. Have confidence that it's possible. Okay. So now we're at a bit of a point session, okay? I want you to come back into the now. Come back very gently, because now you get to make a choice. Just have a sense of where you are and how you might get here to the place where you want to be living your life. You know, the six, the 12, the two years, whatever the time frames were for you. Is it possible that you can get there from where you are, with or without help? With help's easier, isn't it? So if you resonate, if you feel comfortable, if you feel like you can work with me and the program that I'll put together and you feel that you can shift yourself from overwhelmed to owning it, baby, with the support and the tools that I can share with you, then now is the time, okay? Remember, if you're feeling in the overwhelm but you really want to be loved and know that you are, this is your opportunity. So if you're in the red zone, like in the pyramid that I talked about earlier, just really think about that maybe this program isn't for you, but you're not going to be left on the shelf, okay? This is very important. You come here for a reason. There's no mistakes in any of this. Serendipity always does play out, even if you'd recognise it or not. I do have like an individual one-on-one -on -one program, okay? We could do it at your own pace, but you get just that. Okay, if you are in the, the green to the orange section, the middle section of the pyramid, and you're ready to dive dim deep and do the 12 weeks, okay, go through the nine pillars of change, looking at your mind, your body, your spirit, and really diving into your past, 
in a healthy way and transforming those limiting beliefs and actions so that your future can be what you want it to be. To actually learn the tools of change so you can do it without me per se at the end. Now the other benefit is this program doesn't actually shut the door at the end of the 12 weeks. Okay, so you have ongoing access to the to the resources and the tools because it takes time to integrate this style of work. Okay, so I don't want anyone to rush through or feel that they're really stuck and then fall apart because they don't finish in 12 weeks. That's not what this is about. This is about supporting you to do the changes that you need and the pace that you get. You do get six individual consultations with myself, three around specifically food and three around specifically the belief systems and the energy work. You also do have access, obviously, to a group program, which is included in it. So here you go. That's what we're at. If you feel this is for you, then great. Let's chat, okay? And to do that, you just need to click on the link and book uh, your consultation, okay? So here we go. This is for you. I've done 20 years. I've taken 20 something years to get to this point where I can say I'm a damn good person and I'm now on a mission to help others, to save their time, to save their life, save their relationships potentially, but at the end of the day to save their mind so that you as an individual can live the life that you want. It may not be the yacht and the holidays overseas, but if you can at least come to the place of acceptance from a loving space, not res resigning, but, you know, loving space of contentment, joy and peace and happiness and knowing that things come to that, you will attract the positives of what you want to that space, then you're in the right place, baby, and you can own it. All right, so that's it for me. That's for me for now. Again, jump on, there's a bit more information on the website. I'm looking forward to talking to you ASAP and I will see you soon.